sent to you uh, by tomorrow afternoon, depending on how fast my, my email speed is. Okay. All uh, right. Let me get this recording started. Get your form pulled up. Alrighty. What got you interested in coaching? Um. Mostly, I've just been only playing Tracer because I just seem to have the most fun doing that, and I do my best to notice my own mistakes and try and like see what I'm doing wrong. But sure. I understand that I can only really do that if I'm getting punished. Or if I, if it's something that I like, just can easily notice. But there's definitely a ton that I miss. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And kind of my main goal in this game right now is just kind of get better at tracer. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. And I understand she's a pretty difficult character. <laughs> yeah, she. Yeah. I would say she's probably the highest skill ceiling character in the entire game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But the good news is that the value ceiling, in terms of like how yeah. much value that you can get out of the character, is like even in like unfavorable metas it's pretty darn high like i mean it, it, there's like no limit what you can do with a hero even just from from the ultimate right like i mean it's it's yeah. a free fight like and if you can hit basically. it basically like, that's crazy but yeah okay uh righty so how long have you been playing the game um since 2018 technically uh like when the game first came out i pre-ordered it for my okay. xbox though and from then until basically overwatch 2 I was on and off, super casual console player, and I would only play Roadhog. Basically, if I play, <laughs> basically if I play Overwatch, I'm probably gonna one trick somebody because that's just, for some reason that's how I have the most fun with it. Oh my gosh! So, Roadhog is back, so satisfying to lane. I will yeah, say that. I think that's just what I'm after with uh, Overwatch. Is I just like like the the satisfying characters. I feel like. Just getting to eliminate someone from the game for just hitting what was left bumper. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, I, I know some people probably like, you know, <clears throat> you know, starving dogs too. I'm sure there's like a lot of messed up things in this universe, but uh yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh <laughs> so you're are you a console at the moment? <clears throat> no. So when I'm did you transition? PC. Um I'll just say when Overwatch 2 came out. Fair enough. Works for me. Yeah. All right. I um, played like a tiny bit, but that was still on Roadhog and it's like... Sure. Years ago. Sure. Overwatch Makes sense. One. Makes sense. What, why did you transition over? Um, really, I just completely transitioned from console to PC. Got it. Got just it. generally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Core of a competitive thing or just for fun thing or, or what? I mean, at all, I've always had a PC and an Xbox. Uh, but like, I don't know. For some, they were separate just because of my playing with my friends and stuff. Sure, sure. But I just, I don't know. I like PC more. Okay, it's fun. It's good. It, yeah. it, just be able to turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice. Think when I play PC games, I always like my mechanics. I think are higher than my like knowledge of the game. Yeah. And I think that's just kind of fun. That's yeah. something you can only really do with PC. Of course, of course. I okay. Like. Well, welcome to the club. And what initially appealed to you about Tracer? So obviously, you go from Roadhog to Tracer. Like that's like yeah, that's like that's, uh, total that's, like, that's like a five hundred pound like weight loss, you know, and turning into a yeah. Sigma male. Like what what happened there? <sighs> I think I just got obsessed with how many like facets of her game there are. Uh huh. And just like. I can kind of feel like I put the team on my shoulders where I don't necessarily need to like rely on everybody else on my team to get value off of that. Whereas I can more put myself in a position where I allow my teammates to get value off of me. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. And also just like one clips, getting a nice stick. The movement is insane. Seeing yeah. the light. That's yeah. Amazing. Basically. Ironic is like Tracer is one of my least played DPS, but like I coach her the most. That's just how things go. But yeah, there's I mean there's so much that you can do. So much that you can do. Okay. And at the time of the form, you were gold five. Is that still the case? I'm gold one now. Nice. See, I my mean, coaching yeah. is so good. I mean, honestly, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's phenomenal. Already, you've just, done so it much. Just snaps my fingers. Okay. And you said it looks like at least in the form, you play a little bit of Soldier and Reaper. A little bit of Soldier Reaper is basically just like. If I'm just getting owned on Tracer and the other DPS yeah, is Pixel Soldier, yeah, is yeah. I just pull out Reaper. Yeah. 
It, it, respectfully, it's also like, you know, gold players don't know how it's to play gold. the game without Reaper. Basically, well, half the time I'd pick him, i pick him and i just say, okay, I'm just going to babysit my tank. <laughs> I'll just sit on, I'll yeah. sit on my tank. And yeah. basically, whoever he goes, I'll, I mean, that's He's pretty simple, yeah. Person. And the ult's yeah. like a fight winner, too. So, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay. Okay, so Tracer Soldier are definitely like your... Is Soldier more of like a side side chick kind of a thing? Or is it is it something that you're kind of serious about? I'm still pretty serious about Soldier. Okay, Tracer Soldier. I mean, that's a pretty good hero pool, right? That, that's something that yeah. would provide... You know, I think you I would want to expand it, yeah. Go ahead. I think I'd want to expand it still. Any idea where? Like, I'm, where or... I'm playing... Yeah, I'm trying out Ash. Sure. Mostly hit scans. Ash... Cassidy, I like Echo too. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think Sombra too, just because their play styles are so similar. Sure. Keep experimenting. Keep experimenting. Yeah. I think for you, obviously, like when you're actually training, training, you're going to want to put your time into a couple of heroes, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, finding what that hero may be. And maybe you, you, you try Genji and you're like, oh my gosh, I get it, you know, and you're mm -hmm. like, you end up dumping Soldier or, or, you know, you never play Reaper again and you pick a niche widow map as your is your expression yeah. it's fine like as long as you know, honestly in worst case scenario you could just one trick like it's totally however you want to approach the game totally up yeah to you. and i feel like tracer would be one of the better heroes to one trick the best hero to one trick yeah the best hero to one trick maybe up there with oh. lana right now uh just there isn't a situation that she's not going to be okay at least yeah she is counterable there, uh, but she's not mm -hmm. able to be countered totally impossible yeah Really, all the enemy team can do is just make your life a little more difficult. But, uh -huh. like, there's just always somewhere where you can get value. Yep, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and as you get better, you'll find more and more ways to deal with your counters. Yeah. Because some of those counters fall off in terms of value, right? Uh -huh. Torbjorn turret becomes a little less threatening when you get around. Once your team actually, diamond. like, shoots it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Even just you personally knowing how to deal with it is, is important, yeah. right? Okay, what do you hope you get out of the session? A list of key points in my gameplay they need to improve on? Brilliant. <laughs> What are your long-term and short-term goals? In the short term, I'd like to understand my most common mistakes when it comes to positioning and timing my aggression with my team when it comes to Tracer. You've seen some of my videos, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, in the long term, that, that makes my job easy because I, I don't have to start from scratch. Yeah, I really like your video you did with Hydron. That one's yeah, helped me a lot. Yeah, he's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. I think a lot of OWL players have a really good grasp of the game, more so than yeah. uh, streamers. Yeah, I watch a lot, of, a lot of like Overwatch League people. The yeah. only other like streamer person I look at is... Uh, probably awkward mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or like he does like a great job and... explaining his thought processes mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yeah okay in the long term i'm just interested in learning as much as possible okay yeah you just like not... the game yeah i mean i'd like i really just want to improve sure. not necessarily to do with my rank but just get better at the game. okay works for me works for me uh eight hours of sleep brilliant uh training training time right now how much do you play on average per day per week, and how is that time spent? Um, I'd say I probably play like it varies mostly, just depending on my schedule and like what I'm doing with my friends and whatever. But I'd say sure. I definitely play like close to every day for an hour or two a day at least. Okay, that works. And then every day I do try and like I start with just like doing some aim labs a little bit just to get like mouse control and stuff mm -hmm. and then i get in vax to for a little bit and do practice my movement and pulse bombs and tracking okay okay and then i do a death match okay 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 and how long does that usually take you for each step aim labs vax to death match i feel like i spent the i spend the most amount of time on vax to yeah. and then aim labs probably like 20 minutes so how much in Vaxa? Vaxa is probably like 25. Okay, Actually, and then that might death even match be more. is like one death match? Death match is like one death match. And I just... then you play like an hour, hour and a half of ranked? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, your ratio is a little off. Let's talk about yeah. this. Um, aim labs is just not useful for you anymore, I'm going to be honest with you. Especially I would say that, that yeah, playing. it's definitely falling off. When I first started doing it, I noticed it really just... It didn't help my aim. It just helped me like understand, like, just get good control over my mouse. Well, because you had just transitioned. Yeah, that's the key thing. It, the aim lab. I, I think aim trainers definitely have an argument for being very useful, regardless of the game that you play. Just for this is something a mouse in my hand. I move the crosshair moves right. Yeah. Um, I I, I, I used. Go ahead. 
I don't really look at it like this is improving my aim. I think it's it's just something like when I wake sure. up in the morning, just warm my arm up. Total makes total sense. But you've now reached the point in time where that's a lot uh, less necessary slash okay. can be better used elsewhere. There are sure. better in-game options that will do the same thing. So what I would okay. recommend is, um, I mean, let, let's put it this way. If you really like aim labs, that's fine. But you're talking about 20 minute investment almost daily, that's tough. That's okay. a lot of time. What I would recommend for you is, may hey, just do more deathmatch. Sure. Really just do more deathmatch, whether that's the unranked deathmatch, whether that's the tryhard free-for-all deathmatch. Um, and actually, for well, Tracer... I haven't heard of tryhard, what's that? Okay, so, well, let me... I'm going to pray to goodness that they have a lobby started. It's kind of tragic because tryhard deathmatch has gone a little bit of the way of the dodo, but it's still, it's still a good game if it's available. If it's not, it's whatever. Okay, here we go. Brilliant. Okay, so it might be an EU ping because this might be an EU lobby. Okay, but this is this is this is what you got here, all right? You pick a character, here you go. Notice the kills that Silence has. <laughs> 47. Okay. <laughs> They're long death matches. Notice that okay. Discord is disabled. They've they've scaled up my damage to compensate. But basically you oh. have a lot of heroes disabled. Um instant respawn, 50 kills. Right? And if I die, I think also there's a slight instant heal when you get a kill as well. Um, That's nice. It's really, really, it's just like basically deathmatch, but better, right? Instant respawn, sure. and then you go right back again. And the other thing about try hard deathmatch as well is because of these small quality of life changes is that it's a lot more popular, um, which means that you're gonna have, um, at least popular with the high rank players, you're gonna have GM players, masters players, diamond players, owl players sometimes in the lobby. Um, which is going to be a little bit overwhelming for sure, but it's also going to mean that you're going to get like some crazy good practice. Yeah. Right? Like I'm going to assume that I'm probably going to get dogged on most of the time. But, you you like, are. Just you focus are. on just trying to like dodge them. Yeah. And yeah. Get my movement right. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I see, see to me, this is a lot more fun than, than aim labs or back. I would agree. Or, probably. Um, and then if you feel ever feel overwhelmed or that doesn't have a lobby or you're like, I'm not playing on 120 ping right now. Then just do what you already know to do. You know, just this do is regular. fine too. Just freaking regular sure. deathmatch is totally fine. I I, I came. Pe Overwatch was was my first first person shooter. I had literally zero experience in first person shooters outside of like playing in Call of Duty console at a friend's house. You know, um, and I, I taught myself how to aim through deathmatch deathmatch alone. Um, cool. So I would recommend that. Now Vaxta is a weird one. I just got off of a call with a, a Cassidy player, and I I, I think Vaxta would would be useful for a Cassidy player, but for somebody that does tracer. The problem with Vax is you talk about like I practice my movement, but the problem is is that you either have infinite blinks or the blink cooldown time is off. I can't remember which one it is in Vaxta. Um, well, I yeah, I try to do it somewhat regularly, like only using like one to two blinks per target, right. and then I also like think about who I'm going against. Like if it's an Ash, I'll do like AD AD with sure. crouches. So or, like, good for Hansel, you. I'll do long go. Good for you. Yeah. But you know what? You're putting lipstick on a pig. Respectfully, because yeah. they still don't shoot. That's they the problem. Don't they don't shoot, so you don't get re you don't get rewarded for doing the right thing. You don't get punished for doing the wrong thing. So it's too inconsistent. You kind of see what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I mean, I have the same problem with with Genji as well, um, and to a lesser extent, like Ana. Like I I do not recommend Vaxta for those type of players, right? Um, if you're playing Cassidy and you're just going doing doing knowing, you know, that's yeah, fine. That's but, fair enough. But but if you're like actively dueling people, because you talked about it, Tracer has the so many skill expressions compared to other heroes. The the, the blink, the move, to predict abilities, to avoid abilities, uh, to manage yeah. your HP. So many of those skills are not being practiced. In fact, the only thing that I think Vaxta maybe is good for is doing things like, you know, like that. <laughs> you know, but even that is like, you know, you, you look at look at look at the blinks, right? You know, uh -huh. it's just like it, it just it just doesn't feel very realistic. So I, I would I would save Vaxta. Um, I mean, if you wanted, if you were like, I really don't like jumping in the deathmatch right away. I want to warm up my hand. Vaxta is better than Aim Labs. Um, but I would also recommend just spending a lot of time with that. Okay. Makes sense? Uh-huh. Um, and overall, uh, this one is the most personal preference, uh, but I will offer a little bit of advice. You probably don't want to spend more than like, it, okay, there's a difference between warm up and aim training. What you're doing is aim training. When you spend yeah. more than like 20 minutes on uh, your mechanics or your warm up, it's now aim training, which is fine. But you have like right now a like what is it 35, 40, 45 minute warm up? Yeah. 
that's a, that's a lot of time spent before you even get into your first ranked game. And it's not like you're playing a ton of ranked games either. Um, so what I would like to see, at least to toy with, is toy with turning that ratio down to like a 30 minute warm up instead. Uh -huh. 25 minutes, see how that goes. You know, play, play just one more ranked game on, per day. See how that goes. Yeah. A lot I of this is, I, go ahead. I think I also play uh, unranked a little bit too often. Yeah. I just like, I'll just start playing it and then I just keep going and I don't even notice. Well, it's freaking fun, you know? I mean, especially fun, like, in a social environment, playing with friends and stuff like that, you know? That's basically all I play nowadays. Um, uh -huh. But, but you know, my goals are different than yours. So, you know, you want to get better, I don't give a rip. So, for you, it's, it's like, I think for you, it's like competitive time once you're warmed up is the best practice there is in the game. Not just for your mechanics, but also just for getting good at the game. Gameplay, yeah. So, everybody's nuanced. Don't be like, Five minute warm up, never to touch Vaxta again. Only try hard, and then I just grind twelve games per day. No, 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 no. But no, toy with it. That. Find your nuance, right? Toy with it, right? Um, maybe a little bit shorter warm up, a little bit more rank, like you said. Um, and over time, kind of find that sweet spot for yourself, and that will change over time too. Just like, just like for example, right now you're like, you know, I, I liked Reaper. Now I don't know if I'm playing Reaper very much anymore. Things change. Um, so just. Go along with the flow, but I have some, I guess, guidelines and some suggestions for how you can make that flow feel a little bit better. Sound good? No, I think you're definitely right, yeah. Okay. Uh, but don't take my word as gospel. Like, I, you have to do exactly what I say. These are just suggestions, yeah. and every person is a little bit different. Okay. Playtime is, uh, I will say overall, your playtime is definitely good enough to get you to, like, uh, I know you said you do, you're not really as concerned specifically about rank, but, you know, Platinum, definitely. Diamond, probably as well. So I think I could easily hit plat. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think let's put it this way: you you've got a um, you've got some you got a skill curve ahead of you too. Yeah. You know you you've got you've got some improvement available to you. So I you got you got a little while before you have to like reevaluating how much time that you're playing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. So what do you feel is holding back for improving? If I get a solid knowledge of the mentality and understanding of Overwatch, I can focus more on my mechanics because it's easier to see faults in your mechanics as opposed to your play style. Hmm. Good way of putting it. Honestly, yeah, I think that's slightly changed. Okay. I think, like, I know how to get value and work with Tracer in theory, but oftentimes I'll just get into a game and just everything goes out of my head and I'm just, like, focused solely on the game and I kind of forget to think a lot. And that's definitely one of my bigger problems. So, like, not being able so to just, stay focused in the game. Yeah, and then I'll just make dumb mistakes... I'll start racking up deaths, and then my value just goes off the window. Yeah, off, like, sure, defense. sure, sure. Um, you need to use your autopilot, but you need to be like directed with it. Um, yeah. In other words, if if you're going into like, I mean, even for, for what we just did, like jumping into a death match, right? What are you focused on when you're in a death match? Just movement. Yeah, or Honestly. shooting people, or winning a one v one, right? You're not thinking yeah. about as much about your positioning, uh, although no, you can. Game. But you just kind of like it's just that's just kind of going in, right? So you're autopiloting so many things, and that's good. That's what you want, right? Uh, when you get into a competitive game, you might start autopiloting your ultimate usage, or you might start autopiloting your positioning, or you might start autopiloting your mechanics, or you might start autopiloting your the, the timing or whatever detail that you want to do. And that's yeah. all fine as long as there's some, whether it's a micro, macro, big picture, small picture aspect of your play that is not autopilot, right? You want to be single focused and let everything else go. And what that single focus is, is, is up to you. I don't uh -huh. know. So for you, it's just like, I have a hard time thinking in game. Well, about what? Do you know I'd say what? Probably positioning and timing with my tank. I sure. Think. So those are some things that you've obviously been working on. Yeah 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 right yeah that's what you can't autopilot on but again um, i wouldn't say positioning and timing with my tank i would say positioning or timing with my tank because practicing both would be pretty difficult at the same only time. do one at, at a time preferably just, preferably yeah now that you can do both like let's say you were to focus on positioning before the fight starts and then my next step is to look at my tank because you can do one yeah. then the next step but for example if you were to do positioning timing and then also my pulse on message then you're, then there's going to be times in a game where you're gonna to have to start thinking about multiple things and you're not gonna give either one enough of its focus that, it's yeah. gonna, that and, it deserves. Mm -hmm. Once I start doing that, then yes, it's, it's worse than doing nothing. Correct, correct. 
I'm just stretching myself too thin. Correct. But my point is that it's okay to autopilot on a lot of skills. The point is to focus on the skills to get to the point where you can autopilot yeah. on it and it's still halfway decent. That's just how learning yeah. works. So for you, so if I feel like go my mechanics are better. Just kind of let that happen because yeah. I'll have on days, I'll have off days. It's really yeah. not exactly. totally in my control. Exactly. But then just look at just positioning or something yeah. and it will get better naturally it will get better with the warm-up routine that you're doing and the amount of rank that you're playing and, and getting more comfortable with the hero now if there is a specific aspect of your mechanics that you want to improve you heard me talk about trigger discipline before yeah okay. that is something i've looked at and i think i have a decent amount of it but... sure have you have you talked about or looked at uh practiced like tracking and or not tracking but dodging cooldowns with your blinks in the middle of the game a little bit definitely less but you see that's how these are like about. mechanical things that you can like isolate and practice. Yeah. That yeah. that's fine too. You know, you could practice. You could say screw timing and positioning for the next day or two. I'm gonna focus only on like playing around sleeps, nades, Cassidy, mag grenades, Hanzo shots. You know, those kind of things. Like yeah. trying to like when I take these duels, I'm like hyper focused, not even on hitting the shots and timing and positioning, but like never letting any of these abilities hit me. Right. Yeah. That's another really valuable skill to build. So, but but pick a skill. Pick something. Mm -hmm. There's just the game is too complicated to not isolate skills because if you start trying to do too many, there's just too much. You need to let your subconscious take over for some of it. Um, you need okay. to kind of cruise control on 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 something so that you can focus on something else. Um, now, your question though, or maybe your problem is that maybe you're unable to focus on anything, even though one thing. Or you find I, yourself. I would losing. agree, kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what have you tried? Have you tried anything to help yourself stay focused? Um, not really. Okay. Here's a question. I think just trying to like be generally mindful and just slowing myself down. That's I think good. that's what's helped the most. Good. That's good. That's good. But that 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 can be helpful, but that's also a very vague and difficult thing. That's to super do, vague. Yeah. Right? It's like saying today I'm gonna be mindful and calm and patient. That Okay, yeah. well I mean but you have how, to say like, how like yeah. how, right? Because like 'cause that's 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 um admirable, but like the problem is is then we get overwhelmed by so many things hitting us from different directions and then we end up being just kind of miserable. For example, if you wanted to be more mindful and patient today, maybe you could say, I'm going to be, while driving to work, I'm not going to let anything that happens along the ride there like get me in a foul mood or I'm going to take a walk to kind of put myself in a better position for the rest of the day or yeah. I'm going to practice being grateful about something today. You know, those are specific things that have that end goal in mind but, but are, are provided a, at least a foundation of how that's going to actually happen. Right. Um, I think everybody always struggles with like, how do I stop being tunnel visioned? How do I practice my awareness? And my first question is always awareness of what, you know, like what, what right. do you want to be aware of? Like you can't just be vague like that because the problem is, is that most players struggle with awareness because Overwatch is a freaking confusing game. And there's about yeah. 10 things that you have to be aware of. And if you don't have those subconscious skills of being aware of this without thinking, you're not gonna be able to do it. And yeah. most of these people don't have those skills. So you can't just like snap your fingers. I'm aware. No, that's not how it works find what to be aware of right and for you maybe part of your awareness trouble is that uh you try to do too many things at once probably uh, yeah because you're because you because it's like this toxic positivity thing where like i want to be aware of all these things but then because you're trying to track so many things you're actually not giving any of them the attention they deserve and so you don't get better at any of it um uh -huh. now you will get better but you're just going to do it very inefficiently um, yeah. Now, there's a lot of other ways to do that, uh, you know, setting sticky notes, setting little phone alarms, phone bells that go off every 10 minutes. Uh, I'm a big fan of taking breaks, like even just a one minute break between every single game to like recenter yourself and remind yourself, getting a lot of sleep. Uh, those are all things that can help you to stay more focused in game. Um, not yeah, getting tilted. I definitely get a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. I don't get tilted too much. I really only get tilted if like my teammates are just actually annoying me, like <laughs> yeah. in chat or something. Yeah. Most yeah. people on the other team. Yeah. Yeah, but you, but you see my, my, my point here is like yes. either build better habits and put yourself in a better position to be focused through external circumstances or external choices or be more specific with what you want to yourself to be aware of instead of trying to do everything at once. Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, no, I think it would be helpful. Okay. I don't have anything else from your form that stands out to me that I want to go over. Do you have any other questions overall before we jump into some gameplay? Uh, no. no. Okay, no. let's do this. Got a coat? Sure. Alrighty, I am at death's door with this um 
patch they're doing today or this maintenance or whatever. I'm terrified that's going to wipe all the codes. Oh, really? We should be good. We should be good. But my next two sessions, I don't know. No guarantee. I've had this before while I like start a review and like five minutes in, it's like, you have to update your thumb. I'm like, no. <laughs> my, okay, mine is, my game is open right now, so it shouldn't. I mean, I that that's that's the same thing. It's like I, I keep it open. I'm like, you know, fighting it, and but yeah, you know, sometimes it's like kicks you out and like crap. We'll be good for our review though, so you you're good to go. Awesome. Um, and the thing is, it's just so random. Like it's just like, oh, we're gonna be doing maintenance today. I'm like, oh well, okay, well, screw cool. me then. Alrighty, let's uh restart this. Okay, you're already in. Okay, you good to go? Yep. So I would ask you what Tracer's good at. You already know. I would ask you what you've been working on. At least. But we should already know that too. So let's just take this at face value, see what we see, talk about what we talk about. Uh, and maybe for you, especially because you've been doing a little bit of your homework, it's a little bit less about teaching and more about pointing out some of the errors that you might already be aware of, but that you need yeah. to put a little bit of the put a little bit of the attention onto. Uh -huh. Any questions yeah, come think... up, you just holler. Sure. You were saying something, sorry. Oh, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. That's okay. I tend to derail those things. <laughs> got a penny on the uh, rails. Okay. Um. So, one little detail here. It, it's actually super funny. I had a tracer of review on this map, and the tracer took this exact same position and made this exact same mistake. <laughs> um, what you're yeah. doing right now is a mistake. Why? I wasn't in your. Oh. In your... Yo, did you have to restart it? Yeah, because I started. Yeah, yeah. I started stream stop stream. Okay. Are you in now? Yeah, I'm in that. All right, all right, all right. What is the mistake here? Here? I'm not really doing anything. I'm just shooting behind correct. really far away. Correct, correct. This is a misapplication yeah. of the awkward principle, is what I like to call. Where awkward, awkward is all about damage, 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 damage. Yep. The coach Spilo comes in and says, well, wait, 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 wait. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. This is not, this makes no sense. Your pressure here is meaningless. All this yeah. is doing is what? Just telling them I'm here and come Wilds. shoot me in the face. And they'll, right, there's no chance, there's a chance that this Hanzo hits a shot. There's no chance that you do anything meaningful here, right? And it's also wasting time too, because you are on the path to take a position to do something meaningful, correct? Yeah. And all this is, is this is a stop on the road, right? Um, this is just a bump on the road. It's wasting your time. The distraction here is meaningless. The risk is high, the reward is low. Yeah. Tracer sandwich. You ever heard me talk about the tracer sandwich before? Uh, no, but I think I'm gonna guess that it's I run into the middle of their team and get mm -hmm. I shoot one guy in front of me and get shot. Tracer there. sandwich right here. Yep. Or as my grandfather would say, right here. Right. This is a this is a <laughs> tracer sandwich right here. Avoid tracer sandwiches. Always on the periphery. You took a flank. You took an angle. And the irony here is that by pushing deeper on the angle or flank, you actually end up getting yourself. Totally fine if you just sit here. Totally yeah. fine just to sit here. Also totally fine yeah. to take the stairs and rotate around this way. Right. That would have worked too. Also totally fine, something maybe that Awkward would have liked you to do is just take an angle and shoot the tank from here and take an angle later. But uh -huh. take an angle, let's go. <laughs> Good. Not a tracer sandwich. Why? Yeah, because I got my back to the wall. Mm-hmm. Now you and do have to be Hanzo's careful about- in that little doorway. You do have to be careful about your starboard here, right? Because you know they're going to be walking up at some point here, but at least for a little bit, you got some time. Yeah, there you go. Trace sandwich. <laughs> oh man. Where should you adjust? Because it's hard, right? It's it's not. It's easier said than done. Oh, oh you're you're feeding, yeah, right? Like here, I'm just seeing. I just see the the Moira alone. I think. Okay, yeah. Next target. Yeah. So, so take, I could probably just blink again behind her. Sure. Just, blink again behind like, her. Take the in angle in here. Something. Maybe yeah. you have the recall. Where else could you go? Uh, I could go in the room. Sure. I don't, could blink out to here or here, yeah. right? Now, it would be scary because the Hans would be shooting you, but at least you'd be looking at the threat, right? You could yeah. also... What's a high-risk, high-reward angle that you could take here? Um, I can go even deeper behind the Hans. Mm, 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 mm. You've got two blinks, doorway. right? So yeah. you could go blink, blink in here, mini health back, and they're going to be like, oh, crap, you know, turn around and chase you. Right, that you yeah. might not even do any damage, but you'd still create a lot of pressure. But again, it's like the cover, right? You do not want to trace a sandwich yourself, because this yeah. is why. And we've already seen it, right? The thing is, is it's not yeah. only do you not see the shot, but it's also very easy for him to shoot you, because you're moving in a straight line. 
mm-hmm. because you're moving sideways to him. Do you see that? Yeah. You're not 8080 strafing else, him. Yeah. You're focusing on what's in front of you, but he's to your side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Probably didn't need to recall that, given the fact that you still had a blink. Yeah, I think I just got flustered just being in that Back. I got you. I got you. You're good. Maybe pull your life here. Good. Alrighty. Yeah. Not too shabby. And even right now, you could be thinking about, all right, where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? What are you thinking? It's hard, right? This 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 is uh this is one of the tougher positions in King's Row. So you tell me. Yeah. Like normally, I would probably try and take a flank. But the King's Row flank routes, um, just I'm not confident with them. Just they're so tight. And here I feel like we're just pushing cart and I'm kind of just shooting into the choke, so I'm not doing much. So you say you're not confident. Does that mean that you don't know them or you do know them, but you just don't think they're that good? Or maybe a little bit I above? just don't think they're that safe, yeah. Okay, so then what are your I'm options? I'm not that safe with them. Because you, you, you basically said you're darned if you take a flank, you're darned if you don't. So what's the solution? Um, I guess I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, well, think about it. Because here's the thing. With Tracer, you would love a low-risk, high-reward play. Yeah. But you're not always going to get those. Sometimes it's going to be medium-risk, medium-reward, low-risk, low-reward, high-risk, high-reward. What are you doing right now in terms of reward? Um, right here, kind of nothing. I'm maybe on cart. For or just even like here, what you're doing here, right? What would you describe I mean, the risk-to-reward ratio here? Low-risk, low-reward. Mm -hmm. I would go as far to say medium-reward. Oh yeah. You see their comp? You see what they have here? They do have a decent comp for me. Um, shooty, have... shooty heroes, right? Some bat. Yeah. This hero. I play a little yeah. bit of May on the side. I eat people like you for lunch, right? I normally try to just avoid Mays. Sure, but you're not going to be able to avoid the May here. You see this? Yeah. So I would say low risk, medium reward. All right. Uh -huh. Or excuse me, medium risk, low reward. Right. So. So what, do you think? Right what do you think? That is probably, I'd still say, like, I could just sit right on that wall and just shoot them, and that's pretty low risk, and I'd say that's a better award than what I would be getting. Slightly from better. Slightly better. Because it's at least in a more off angle. Yeah. But you're and, not going to be able to get healed, and it still feels too far, right? Yeah. But I still have a lot of countermeasures where I can just blink behind cover easily. I want you to kind of ignore the fact that the Batiste is here, because obviously it's cheating. Obviously it's like, oh, perfect, the Baptiste is here. Yeah. But maybe you didn't know that, right? Maybe I even, don't think maybe, I would have seen him. Maybe even a few seconds later, right? Maybe he's not going to be here in a few seconds, right? Okay, your yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, okay, so then, like, you know, what do you think? I think here I can easily get behind the Bap. Okay, what do you think about this angle here? That's pretty safe, too. And I'm, like... I'm making a sandwich with the other team, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to be the sandwicher, not the sandwichy. Yeah, huh. exactly. Okay. Risk and reward ratio, what do you think? Give me a ballpark estimate. I'd say this is more high reward. I could probably... The bat wouldn't be looking at me as long as, like, he didn't hear me or something. Sure. Maybe a medium risk. I could risk. probably get a one clip on him or at least get out lamp. Or right. Something. You're just thinking pressure, right? You're not thinking yeah. about kills, but can I force the BAP to turn around? Can I force resources? Yeah. Can I force the Moira to turn around? Can I help my Ryan get through the choke? Right. Will you be at a loss of sustain? Yes, you're not going to have healing, but there's a mini health back here. There's also a mega uh -huh. right here. So you've there's got options, mega. right? So maybe here, also here, another option two, right? Here. Uh -huh. I think as these flanks have feel tough, I still feel that they're better options. And obviously, in the moment, you agreed to. Sure enough, there's shift. May has turned around. Hans has turned around. They are hard chasing you. Now, my yeah. only, my only, only, only feedback here is what's the problem with what you're doing? Is the timing bad? Not necessarily. No, your team is taking this fight at the choke. I'm okay with this. What's the problem right here? Where's your better escape I'm... option? The health back. The health back, right? Either on the left here, so that you can immediately re-engage the fight, or the mega here, right? Yeah. One or the other. Now, I will say, you did create a play. Let's watch. See it? 
That's a big the shatter. The only reason this Rhine lands this shatter, the only reason this Rhine is able to walk to this choke without immediately dying is you watch the blue circles on your screen move like ants that got their pile kicked. And by the way, this is without a widow. Second, you see this? people turn on me. Yeah. Look at that. Not only turning, but they actually, they pressed the S key. Move. They yeah. moved, right? They have much worse angles on shooting your back line. This is good. You yeah, guys might even win this. Doing nothing that, yeah. yeah, you guys might even win this fight down one. Very possible. And this uh, Kiriko, I'm doing with them. Ah, okay, perfect. So yeah, my only complaint here is what Awkward would call uptime, right? Where you go for yeah. a long flank, you took too long to adhere, to be honest with you. You, you made the decision Probably. too late, okay? The other problem here is that when you take poke, and you took a lot of it, your first response wasn't to think, I'm going to go to a health pack. You, you kind of panicked and ran. So then, I mean, I wasn't expecting four <laughs> yeah, right away. Always, so expected. I just got out of there like as soon I got as you. I, I got could. you, I but always expect it, right? So then, at this point in time, you should be shooting again right now. Yeah, right. I'm Twenty six, and you're, and you're not, One right? So four forty two, four forty, four thirty nine, four thirty eight. You're four seconds too late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they already had the window up too. Correct. So it's a great play, but it's a burst of value followed by a long period of downtime that if you'd played the health packs a little bit better, uptime, uptime. Yeah. Me and Awkward are not always in agreement with uptime and angles and timing and things like that. But we yeah. are in agreement, agreement that getting higher uptime is, is a great goal to have. Uh-huh. Cool. That's a pretty decent pulse bomb. Yeah, I, I, think, I think even with Lamp here, by the way, you don't necessarily have to wait for Lamp um i just never really do because it puts them at 40 anyways yeah and that's... It, it's okay it, it, you know force fade force ice block you know um yeah but if you're going to stick those characters but if you're going to stick bapper hansa you don't necessarily the only thing i will say is that lamp plus shift could kind of ruin your day um yeah. so keep that in mind but uh yeah this is this is a uh, this is going to be what we call a juicer Okay, I promise I didn't take this replay because of that. I didn't even know it's that just was a, in It's there. just an excellent side benefit. No, I know I'm messing with you. Yeah, that's fine. Ha! <laughs> Let's go. Although I will say, looking at a spray in the floor is so 2018. It's, okay, it's well, so, it's rather you are looking at the guy who played in 2018. Wait, gosh, gosh. What is the term? Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you say it? I'm going to look it up. Wait. <laughs> gosh. Gauche. It's gauche. That's that's the term. It means uh, lacking grace or social polish. Awkward yeah. or tactless. Gauche. I think I do have that when I play. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy messing with the other team. Okay. Getting a little toxic. Well, it's not that. It's just not. It's not super hip. Is what it okay. is. Okay. You got. I don't cool need to be hip kids. when I play Overwatch. Got to be cool with the I kids. I just want to get in the enemy's head. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> Imagine not caring about your social presence in the Overwatch game. That's a little I mean, bit cringe. Okay. I uh, mean, I am playing Overwatch. Anyway, that's true. That's so true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, awkward. Coincidentally. Um, what should I you just, do here? You might run, run in, and so... You should fight. Just, yeah. But where should you fight? Who should you fight? Whom? With what? Where? When? How? Um, this... Hanzo, actually. Yeah. Super now, now, regardless of whether this I is a Hanzo or not, ready for that? It's it's everybody's favorite dinner time meal. Racer okay. sandwich. You see it? Yep. Yeah. You're thinking, I gotta follow up off of this Ryan pin. It doesn't have to be on the target, though. It could be off of the distraction on a target that is now isolated because Reinhardt is pinned. You see what I'm saying? Not yeah. to mention, the May is not exactly the easiest kill for you compared to a Hanzo. Right? So... Yeah. You really need to. I was kinda... just going for who he was on. Right, and that's that's the mistake. Go. Yeah. You see. Yeah. Nice. Do you think, would it have been a better play to start that fight going on this side, on the right side? Maybe. And then Maybe. I probably would have seen the Hanzo. Yes, and but also the problem with this back. flank here is everybody and their mother would have seen you, and they yeah, probably would have true. cleared you out. Maybe even shot you. So this yeah. the, this one was sneakier. This is more okay. Yeah. It, it's it's good it's good to scout that because the nice thing about this angle is you can like deepen 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 yeah you know that's what i like about it but you and just can't I can even it. get in that health pack room turn around right maybe if you got in here hard. earlier and like hid that would have been good but i don't know if you had time to yeah. do that because you were standing like, spraying thanks and pulling off the craziest yeah. victory dance i think i have ever seen so yeah i did get a triple you know actually you know what it is your fault you suck 
I knew it was your fault. I knew all along. Okay, you guys get cap, play for your life. Uh, yeah. And then now we use the right flank, which makes sense. You need to wait for a Ryan um, to do anything crazy, but if you see the opportunity to shoot a little here. I mean, your team is fighting here, right? So, like, I don't mind you peeking. You just need to understand risk to reward, right? Your Ryan isn't yeah. there yet, so where is most of the enemy team's focus going to be? Probably me. Probably you. So this is where maybe Awkward and I are not in agreement. I would say wait here on this flank and wait for your Ryan to walk like two seconds, then go. Awkward yeah. would say, you know, in his, in, in his, I can't do his accent, um, but he would just say like, shoot, shoot, <laughs> yeah. shoot, 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 damage, damage, damage. You would say damage, shoot, damage. shoot, Dale. Right, right, yeah. right. Always damage, always damage. Your team is close enough to a fight, just keep shooting, right? Um, I would disagree. Awkward, I think, leverages a little bit of his extra movement capability and his mechanics, like kind of disrespects the enemy team. Um, yeah. I want you to respect the enemy team. I want you to, because you're, unfortunately, uh, you're, you're not, you're not at his level of movement. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I would prefer you to focus on your timing a little bit here. But I, I keep, if you are going to shoot, at least have the dignity to focus on your movement a little bit better. I do not want... Do you want to see Reaper? No. Okay. I don't either. That's yeah. good. I think this game I... We'll really zoom around. Uh, I could be ashamed of yourself one. bullying the people like this. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to see it. You fumble the bag, don't you? Probably. Oh god. No. Well, I, mean, you're, I feel like this one's a really oh, bad one. Oh, you definitely fumble the bag. I want to see it. Okay, <laughs> the whole time. Everybody points yeah. and laughs. All right. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's take a look. <laughs> Very confusing. Very confusing. Yeah. Now, I don't. You. If he you was up there. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, then find a solution. So, if there is somebody inaccessible for you as tracer, what's the solution? Uh, just kind of annoy them. Really, it's kind of like that's the wrong solution. You can't stop the Reaper from being here. You can't yeah. stop the Diva from being here. You can't stop the Kiriko from being here. Heck, but it I might even be get... hard for you to stop the Soldier from being here. Because, like, this is an angle that you could clear out maybe, but maybe it's awkward. So, wh yeah. what's, the, what's the solution? I can go on their Zen probably. Yeah, for crying out loud. Yeah. Some, if they take all these positions that you can't reach, you kick, you kick him in the uh, Achilles heel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because by taking all of these positions, somebody's going to be fat kidding right somebody's left by themselves and usually yeah. it's sometimes it's the even most the most valuable target right the fat kids in overwatch are usually the really powerful ones right case in point right so take it out take yeah. the angle i just wasn't even like processing that information like all right. i i just only saw those four people up there and i just think but you okay, should the team's up there you should because what's the question when you roll out from spawn what's the first question whoops who do i shoot no yeah so who do you shoot not that guy, not that guy. Not find really somebody. Anybody. Right? Find somebody. I'm so close. I'm in the room. You're, you're so and close. And I turn around. You're yeah. so close. Here I'm doing, I'm just So doing close to enlightenment. But, <laughs> yeah. but you see the that problem here, right? He's trying to get up there and get the soldier. Yeah. You try, you're sweating, you're sweating, you're sweating, you find nobody to shoot, and now you're panicking. Now this is fine, you know, Reaper's available. You can shoot Reaper, it's fine. Haha. <laughs> Like here, I just feel so pressured. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're doing a good job. And because yeah. you, the problem is, is that when you make a lot of bad decisions in Overwatch in the first couple of seconds of a fight, or even pre-fight, you will put yourself in a situation where it feels like total chaos. Let me give you a good, yeah. uh, a good example. When we were growing up in Florida, uh, I grew up in a time in Florida where there were a lot of really bad hurricanes, back to back to back to back. It was like 2004, 2005. We had like three or four hurricanes, all right? big nasty stuff and if you don't prepare for the hurricanes with sandbags and you know having a you know water backed up and some food and whatever then when the hurricane hits it's total chaos for us we were relatively well prepared we were relatively lucky it was pretty chill nothing really scary nothing it's not as dangerous as a tornado really it's just it just is it's a lot of water it's a lot of rain it's a lot of wind it's fine but what you've done right now is you failed to prepare and you failed to figure it out game. Right. And so now the hurricane or the team fight is starting and it's total chaos for you. So the, yeah. the solution is not to what do I do now? The solution is what should you have done 20 seconds ago? Probably set up in a better position. Right. Find a target. Where, like, they don't up. already know I'm there. Because like here, if I want, if I thought like, okay, I'm in a bad position, I'll get to somewhere better. Correct. 
if I use my blinks, they're gonna know where I go, mm -hmm. pretty much. And then it's too late. It makes my job pretty hard. It's too late, right? That's the key takeaway for you. Is, is the key thing is to to never put yourself in these situations. To solve, yeah. to make a decision, to find a plan, find a target, take an angle, and then we don't have to worry about all this crap. Now we're good. I mean, it's stressful. I'll probably recall this to be honest. Definitely would have recalled. If you not using recall means that you have to run screaming back to the middle of your team, then you should have used recall. Yeah. I think I'm definitely, my cooldown usage could improve. What does that mean? What about your cooldown usage? You speak from experience here, yeah? So I find mean? that, like, if I find somebody, iso for example, if I find somebody isolated, I'll probably like blow everything at them. Uh -uh. And then if I get the kill, I might just run right back in with no recall and one blink. Got it. And that's like the biggest facepalm moment every time and I do it nonstop. It's about scaling your aggression based off of the resources that you have. Yeah. You know, if I don't have sleep dart as Ana, do I really want to be taking duels with that Genji if he's full HP, full cooldowns, right? Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's just a good general skill to kind of gauge your aggression based off of the level. We talked about high risk, high reward plays, right, with Tracer. For you, it might also be, you know, high resources, aggressive play, low resources, passive play, right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, to be honest with you, this, this entire fight has just felt like you've just never really been on an angle at all. Yeah, I, I'm kind of just, just running around shooting right, randomly. Right. You're using your mobility like 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 you have like a really bad itch and you're just like you got ants in your pants, right? Like you're Basically. just running around randomly here. Um do you want to take a look at some soldier? We can do a little soldier, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see is how much soldier is it? Is it the rest of the match? Okay. There is it. So, let's let's come back to the soldier. Let's stay on the tracer train for right now. That works for you? Yeah. Find your target, find your angle. Whee. Okay. Well, here I don't even go up the stairs. That's fine. This angle works too. Yeah. I, I mean, I, like... I wouldn't necessarily... Like, you need to... See, the problem here is... We talked about Tracer Sandwich. I have two people looking at me there. Right, you got two people looking at you, so your priority is to live, right? Or to kind of get out of here, right? You need to get out of here. Yeah. You need to get out of here. I think I just didn't see that Zen, or the Sim. I was just I looked it. at the Zen and I saw him and I thought, okay, I'm in this room. That's pretty safe. I got the okay. health pack. They're not that deep. I can shoot the, the Zen. I just didn't know the Sim was there. Because I don't think you taking right or left there was a mistake. I just think that yeah. it was a choice. You did not I play that choice well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awkward says, shoot, shoot. Yeah. Spyler I mean, I says, you can, there. but you can also take an angle and clear the on off high ground. Right. Yeah. It's up to you. Or I don't do that. I mean, that's that's fine. Okay, so here's the question. I know you're up two, but I want you to pretend that you're not. If you choose to not take stairs and you want to shoot tank from an angle, where must you position to avoid a tracer sandwich? To shoot the tank? Mm hmm. Just shoot from an angle. I could probably play on that bone booth. I yeah. Or just get, like that wall area. Get, get just like wall. hug this area here, right? Yeah. You, you, could, you don't have to clear the on off high ground. If, that, if you think that would take too long to set up, okay. I hear you. That works for me. Double blink over here. Play this corner here. Distract the Zen. Distract the Queen. Set up an angle where that Ana cannot punish you. Nobody can punish you. And do it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And their do tank is just an open space here. Right. So your I've takeaway is... I've got looking at them. Yes. Yes. There's a good chance the Ana can't keep them up. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. So your main takeaway is when I'm doing pressure, I'm either like looking to take an angle flank, backline, whatever... Or if I think that might take too long, then I set up an off angle that I don't get pincered and shot in the back. Yeah. Remember uh, here on our attack last time? Yeah, I remember that. And then you get impatient and you go in here and then you get smoked. Mm-hmm. Right? Not bad. Not bad. You're aware of it, but you're still peeking it, right? Now, again, I don't, I really don't think it matters that much because it's just Ana, right? And you're up a bunch. And so like, I'm not going to like freak out over it, but I think it's a good thinking exercise. You know, like yeah. what if, what if that wasn't just Ana? What if that was Hanzo? What if there are more members of the enemy team? If there were more people up there, I think it's higher risk, also higher value though. Because I'm sure. clearing their team off. Exactly. Down. Exactly. Better access to squishies and all that juice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
Symmetra's annoying. She's. By the way, how yeah. is she able to hit so many right clicks on you? Uh, my movement's probably bad. Mm, maybe your movement. The hitbox is pretty big, but it's it's a little bit of blink. Yeah. She's also hearing you and predicting you, so something to kind of keep in mind. Yeah. Symmetra is I actually be crouching more. Uh, versus Symmetra, no. <laughs> No, not versus symmetric. No, I didn't. I don't. No, I don't mean like. Oh. In one v one, I mean like if I'm oh, approaching. Oh, oh, creeping up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this guy. Uh, like, yeah. And I'm creeping up to this corner. I see what you're saying. Like, I'm crouching like uh, right here. Yeah, you could. I mean, that little blink right there. You like you're in such a rush to get here. Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought it was just the Anna. I hadn't yeah. thought of I, that, the TP up there. That's a that's a familiar uh, story. You know, that's something. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just the uh, Zen. I mean, you know, I mean the Anna. Yeah. Yeah, and then I mean you see the orb right there, there from the sim, man. Right? So you you got you got to know. Um, sim is actually pretty good versus Tracy. Uh, the uh, yeah, the, the orbs travel really fast. They're gonna take two thirds of your HP. Uh, it's a big deal. And now with the tracking you through walls on the turrets. Mm, yes, good information. A lot less damage, thankfully, but yeah. Yeah. I think Sim is an underrated character in this game. I think she's actually fairly decent. Her ult is also very, very, very good. Now her ult is actually. For a long time, I thought like, "Wow, this is crap." Until I realized, like, with Tracer, it's really nice. It's it's good versus it everybody. Insane. I mean, it is probably top three most powerful DPS ultimates in the entire game. Wow. Um, and the thing with this ultimate as well is it's 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 extremely, uh, it scales really well for all ranks. Bronze yeah. top five hundred, it's still busted in top five hundred. Whereas Pulse Farm is like broken in top five hundred, but like. <laughs> not so good in lower ranks you know uh okay yeah. let, let, let's let's apply some of our awkward logic here you know because you were you're taking an angle on the tank right you could get healing yeah. from here and you're not on the back line so what are the upsides and downsides of your positioning right now i'm kind of just making it a little easier for my tank to approach sure are you putting out are you putting out decent pressure from your the distance that you're shooting at right now yeah this is definitely close yes enough where can okay get can you damage. get healing from here uh, yeah. Yes. Is there a high risk of death here? Not really. No. Not really. Uh, how about your target priority, shooting a queen? I think, because this is kind of pre-fight, I think it's okay. I think it's okay, think, too. It could be better. I think it's okay. But, like, but you kind of see that's the one downside, is that you're, you're off-angling on a tank. It's okay. Yeah. It's not the best. Now, you could deepen onto the back line, no? Yeah, I can What are the downsides me. of that decision, though? Um, I get myself out of the fight for a little bit. Downtime. It's also higher yes. risk. Higher risk, more downtime, um, but a much, much better reward. So yeah. what do you think you should do right now? Balancing out the current situation of the fight, what's the correct decision here? I Is think there a correct fight, decision? If I do, I think wrapping around would probably be better because I could get, get out nade, get out sleep, and then they wouldn't have that for when the fight actually starts happening. We might use Kitsune... Mm, mm -hmm. without nade that could be pretty useful i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know what the correct solution is here i don't think it really matters yeah i think you could look at this and be like oh the fight's not really starting so it's not really important uh you know if i take the time to set up yeah. i could also be thinking about like hey actually this jungle queen's way overextended considering her moira's in the spawn maybe we can actually kill her uh, and i don't i, I want to be contributing the pressure here i might also be thinking if i shoot this junker queen they're gonna back up which is going to allow me to take an angle and set up on the back line, right? Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Let's let's just see what happens. What I want you to do is to at least choose the medium risk, medium reward, lowest low reward play like this, or the highest high reward play. At least make something that actually has a, a reason behind it, right? Yeah. Don't like, again, no no high risk, low reward plays. You know. So you think like just like if I'm in the game. Should I be thinking like, what am I doing right now? Where? Yeah. What angle should I take? Am I actually like getting? Am I actually helping my team? Yeah. Just think about what position should I be on right now? Yeah. Do I feel like this position makes sense? Yes or no? Okay. Then you're good to go. Like right now, this position makes sense. There's logic behind yeah. it, right? Some of your positions earlier, standing in the middle of the enemy team, not taking an angle, not taking a flank, have made no sense. Yeah. I I'm not unhappy with this. I mean, it's massive. You see, see similar. Right? The wall is kind of just. It's 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 crazy. Now wait a second. Okay. What happens here? You hit me. Was it one of her orbs? Oh no. Aha! Oh, holy shit! How did I not hear him? 
He did a sneaky. Holy crap. Oh, he wraithed onto me. Jeez. I was so confused. Okay. Hey, all right. We did I run back well. to our team. <laughs> yeah, I got a health pack. That was great. That was great. And now we're on the high risk, high reward. I wouldn't even say high risk, but like medium risk, high reward play. Yeah. Right? I'm still in a room. I did just take that health pack, so I won't have it if I do get turned on. Just get your recall. It blinks. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Let's see, let's see what happens here. Great movement because what was about to happen to you if you had not moved? Either she throws something at me. You see the Reaper? Oh, yeah. Tracer reaper. Sandwich, right? And if you blinked yeah. here, Tracer Sandwich, right? You're staying. Notice that you're staying on the periphery. We could draw a circle around blue and you'd be just outside of it, right? Okay. That's what we want to see. So, is there really just like never a time other than like a really niche time where I should just be in the middle of the team? I should really only be focusing on around what's happening when should you be in the middle of the team fight when is it acceptable for you to blink in the middle of the enemy team like when there's a big brawl going on no you still want to be on the outside right shooting okay up. or uh pulse bombing if i have recall. sure oh ooh, ooh. what do you mean pulse bombing like if i'm going for a big pulse bomb yeah just blink in yeah. quick get back out yeah. again if i have recall up i think it's not the worst decision what if this sim is one hp and you're over here oh then i can you see I what can... i'm saying yeah quick quick burst okay. you don't stay there my point is yeah. that it's not never prolonged in the middle of just prolonged being... yes yeah. okay yes because the longer you stay there the more chances that you die yeah. right so well, like just... if i if i go for that sim at one health and i die I'm still making the right play. It's just, yes, it just you got unlucky. Yeah, because yeah. you're thinking if I don't go in, I might not get the kill, so therefore I should go in, right? Yeah. It's but a my, worse play than to let her live. Yes, exactly. So my question is not this. Notice by the way, remember this angle here? This is like the we, we were calling it like the yeah. awkward tank angle. It's still uh -huh. outside the circle of the blue. Yeah, you notice that I don't have anybody behind me, and right, like there, everybody's you're always, always everybody's in front of me in a sense. Uh, everything keeping it in front of you, right, right. So this movement here to this direction here is also following that principle, right? Yeah. I don't think I was thinking about that Reaper. I was just kind of thinking like, good movement to kill their Anna. Now, I'm gonna point and laugh a little bit because <clears throat> yeah. this blink, not great. Probably would have preferred a blink to here, to this cover here, because this yeah. feels a little close. But regardless, let's watch this really slow from a red-blue perspective. Uh-oh, you see it? Tracer. Triple Decker Tracer Sandwich. Nasty. And look what happens to your HP. You get hit by Sim Orb. You see that? Yeah. So that takes a big chunk of your beat HP off. You yeah, go in for the kill least... because you're like, this Ana is one. Yeah. I don't care I about Tracer Sandwich. I'm going to get the kill. However, because you don't get the kill fast enough, what do you die to? The Reaper. Melee and the You do Anna see the blue red? Me. You see it? Yeah. That's Tracer it. Tracer Sandwich. Tracer Sandwich. So like if I were to have been able to kill that Anna there, I would have had more resources and health to be able to get out. Right. A lot. I mean, you could also look at this and been like, you probably shouldn't have egoed this. You just recall and get out because I mean, yeah. look at how much space you're creating, mate. Like this is unbelievable. This queen should be dead. I mean, yeah. she's not dead, but okay, like but, here, I'm probably just too focused. Or maybe on, right, you're too focused on the kill. So, so okay, so so all that being said, we're sitting back here in 0 0.25 in our cushy seats, you know, drinking lattes, talking about yeah. how you're feeding, right? But in the moment, in the moment, I want you to watch this and tell me, what do you think? Full speed. I mean, I should have at least seen that Reaper. And known that he was shooting at me. I think maybe you recall I, a little bit sooner. I think once I see the Reaper shooting at me, I probably think, okay, I've gotten the attention of two people and I'm deep in their back line. I can recall this and say I got that. I, I think I think so too. I think so too. But at the same time, especially for somebody who is gold one, not the end of the universe. Yeah. Not the end of the universe. I think you did you started the fight on a good angle. You rotated to a good angle. You had a really nice blink out here to the Ana. You almost got the kill. You didn't, it, it's not like you were t making really bad decisions initially, took bad angles. You just kind of choked at the end under a lot of pressure. 
yeah. I can live with that. Do you remember when we were on third point and we we're like, you need to set the stage for yourself, right? Then live with the results of what you do. The, the hurricane yeah. analogy, right? Exactly. I think you set the stage really quite well. I just think you fumbled a little bit in, in the moment when things got pretty messy, maybe messier than you expected it to be. So you know what? We can say that's a mistake, but it's it's not a huge a mistake. I would I would you know keep myself up at night over, right? Yeah. I wouldn't sweat it too much. You did you played fine. You played better than than what we'd expect. And sure enough, your team's gonna win the fight off of it. I mean that really you could actually go back and I mean, we, we won't do it, but you could go back and watch this fight over and find your team benefiting from your death 15 seconds after you died. Yeah. You know, all the space that you created, all the cooldowns that you forced, all the attention that you, you were able to, to, to pull onto yourself. And because you did it so well, your team actually ended up winning the fight 4v5 long after you had died. Yeah. What do you think about it? How are you setting the stage right now? I think this is pretty good. Pretty good. I Looks like a good angle. Could go in on the Moira here. She's half health. Yeah. Maybe a little bit higher risk, higher reward. You could also take the more conservative, awkward angle in here and shoot tank with healing. How would I get there? Uh, from, from, I'm saying, with your team oh, like, to an off angle from, here. Okay, yeah. yeah, I'm always giving you like at least another option, a more conservative option. You see this off angle yeah. on the tank here? Uh huh. I prefer your angle, personally. But it's another off angle, right? Yeah. I think most often, I play more aggressive. What does that mean? Oh yeah, I, I do know that from your videos you hate when people say aggressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I... I prefer getting in their back line and like Deep rings, diving in blinks. hard. Yes. Blinks, blinking a lot around them, baiting cooldowns and stuff. That's when I'm having the most fun. Sure. Yeah. And I, I think most of the time versus most compositions, especially a composition with an on a soldier back line, yeah, probably the better play. Probably the yeah. better play. You know, but always worth looking, taking another look at it. Okay, Tracer I'm sandwich. Here, I'm looking for Tracer a sandwich, bomb. but there is a reason for it. Yes. I was looking for a pulse bomb and I just played way too slow. Yeah. Trace a pulse bomb. I was trace going for a 180 and then I turned around and just yeah, like 20. That's okay. Bombs. That's okay. Yeah. But you know what? You had a good reason to uh, to trace your sandwich, right? So that's yeah. all right. Mistake. I'm turning back. I know why you pulled back, but you cannot leave this position because this is where Awkward and I are singing in unison. Downtime! <laughs> yeah. Right? It's okay to, to pull back, but go right back and start shooting again. Play around this I'm only down pack. 20 health. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you still have this many health back. And you had such a great off angle to start it off. Yeah, oh, I, oh, I mean, look at this. Oh, oh like, dude, yeah. did you just get carnage? I think you got carnage. Yeah, yeah I just you threw did. it all you did, the way. Didn't you? There it is. Oh. Why on earth are you getting carnaged? You know? This queen yeah. is now unkillable. She's got like 7,000 healing per second off of that carnage. I'm so grouped with my team. And, and that's I it. Total chaos. Yeah. Right? Hurricane analogy. You put yourself here, total chaos. It's impossible to see or do anything. You're like frantically looking for pulse bomb opportunities. This game is over. Um, yeah. Okay. Sadly, we didn't have time to look over the soldier thing. I apologize. I have good news about that in a second, though. We'll get to that in a second. So. Tracer. I really care. What are the skills? What are the habits you need to practice? Just getting myself set up properly. And then set. that's allow me to like domino effect into more value. Deep angle blank or short angle blank. Be fight. Okay. Right? Take a second to before the fight starts to consider the position or the angle that you ought to be taking. Right? Yeah. Risk and, and reward. Risk versus reward, right. Um, risk versus reward. And on any angle, the goal is to how, what, remember the periphery, the tracer sandwich. What are, what are like your guidelines you're thinking about? The guidelines for following the peripheral? Yeah, just positioning. What, are something, what is something that you could, like, how, what is a simple way to phrase it that you could remember easily at the moment? Just take flake rounds, blank routes. And just try and like take in my surroundings, like see where their team is, where everybody on their team is playing, so that I know like I don't get run on by the Reaper from behind me. Right, right. Yeah, I do like your uh, tracer sandwich analogy. I'm definitely gonna look for that more. It's simple, you know. Yeah, I, that's I'm, super simple. Super simple. That's one thing that awkward is really good at is keep 
getting memorable things that stick in your brain. Yeah, right? that's why I like him. He like says always be shooting. Mm -hmm. If you have recall up, go hard. If you don't, be more passive. And then he had this like analogy with like boxing that I like. jab and cross. jab versus cross. You yep. know, your cross is like you triple blinking in, yep. one clipping their Anna and recall. Jab them. is constant pressure. Cross is the cash out. Yeah. Right. Right. Now it's not a hundred percent accurate, but it's it's close enough and it sticks. Right. Um, yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I mean, we talked about that a little bit on the end of third point, right? When where your aggression, and this is where I do like the term, how aggressive, how greedy you play is dependent upon that recall, right? Yeah. Or the number of blinks that you have. Maybe that's something to put in the something to practice as well. What do you think? We didn't see as much or talk as much about it, but you you know you play better than I do. About what? Sorry. The the level of aggression around your resources. What do you think? Like I think I should just be more aware of like where my health is at, health packs around me, and probably mostly if I can get healed. Because I think a lot of the time I'm not aware of my team, and I'm just I'm focusing on the enemy team and what I can right. get value from them. Sure. And I do not really look so much at how I can get help from my yeah. team. Cause, cause yeah. Because I'm duoing with the Kiriko there. So I think like sure. there that game I like didn't really see him at all. Right, right, right. You might not be on your screen, but you got he's got to be in the back of your brain. Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that's that's the main takeaway for me. Uh, for you, it definitely feels like a lot of these these really really basic kind of things that you kind of need to be working on in isolation. And remember that it all ties up with in isolation, right? Not yeah. trying to do all of these at once because oh my days, as we saw. When the when the fight gets hot, it's really hard to not screw up, you know. Yeah, so like, just focus on something simple. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions? I think these are the big three for me. Do you have anything else that you think you need to be working at, or habits you need to improve, or anything else? Um. I guess dive because I didn't really see dive, or we didn't see dive in that comp. Yep. So like. Oftentimes, I feel like I'm slow, or I come in after my tank. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably, I don't really understand, I'd probably I'd say I'm best at diving with a ball. Sure, very obvious. Just because it's pretty simple to see when he's going to slam. He swings yes. up in the air, and his hitbox is still for a second, and I can just double blink in. <laughs> and whoever he hits is going to be moving up and down in a straight line. Mm -hmm. And then Monkey, too, I think. That's pretty simple because I can just sit in his ball or in his bubble. Mm -hmm. And then Diva, I don't really understand just because. Just think about is Matrix Diva is doing anything? Because Diva is a nuanced hero, right? So the question yeah. is is Diva doing anything? Is she taking a trade? Because every tank is going to be engaged in a different way, shape, or form. Some tanks are a little bit more passive. But if there is damage cooldowns being exchanged, then that's a fine time to go. Don't yeah. worry about nailing the timing to a millisecond. Just never, just never be super late. Never be super, super early. early. Okay. Right? Again, it's all about like choosing your battles. Don't worry about perfection with your timing because that's impossible in a ranked environment. Instead, focusing on fixing the obvious errors. Yeah. And also, I think like I could also look more at my own team and see like what's what on the end. What does the enemy team have that's gonna hurt my team? So like if there's if I have like a hog and there's an Anna, I can try and get out an aid or something. I wouldn't worry as much about that. Focus more on yeah. just doing raw pressure at a good time and the cool arms will come. Yeah. And okay. if they don't come because they've been used on your team, then you're going to be the one getting the kill. Okay. You see that? And if you're the one that's forcing the cooldowns, then it will be your team that benefits and your team will get the kill. Yeah. Either you are the jab that sets up your team's cross or your team is the jab that sets up your cross, to use that analogy again. Yeah, I think oftentimes I put too much pressure on myself to get that kill. Yes, and I don't, and I'm not like knowing that my teammate can get it because so like you're we looked to get at the that jab and the cross. We looked at that second point where I was in their backline for a long time fighting their Anna, mm. when I could have just used recall and lived, and then continued my uptime. Correct. Correct. Right. It's about knowing like the, the extent of like how much impact can I have right now. Just think about think about it from a that's why I always use the word pressure, right? Because pressure is objective. 
you just shoot people, you distract them, whether you yeah. get the kill, whether you get the cooldown, I don't know. Four people might chase you, nobody might chase you, and you might get the kill, but it doesn't matter. You just do pressure, react to what they do. If four of them chase you, you live. If none of them chase you, you kill. It depends. Yeah. Because if, you, okay. if you're always trying to carry and you're trying to secure a kill in a 1v4... Uh, That's going to be hard to do. You saw that with Ana, right? When you tried, I have to kill this Ana. No, you don't. You have already won the fight with what you're doing. They are freaking yeah. out over you right now. Great job. Yeah. Whereas in the previous fight, when you got the 3k pulse bomb, they weren't even looking at you. So mm -hmm. you were the reason you got the 3k pulse bomb. Stop looking for yourself in the kill feed. You know what I'm saying? That's not how you kill. Yeah. yeah. Make sense? It does. Okay. I look at that as like the, I don't know if you saw, there's a, a video on it, like the, um, it's a 1v1 versus 1v2 rule. As soon as it becomes a 1v2, your priority becomes most of the time on survival and Just less live. on popping off. Yeah. All right. I think that's a nice, simple way to put it. Sure. 1v1 versus 1v2. Kill when the 1v1 versus survive the 1v2. Source advantage. Okay. Any other questions? Um, like, would you say, like, if it's a 1v2 where I'm alive and I have resources, am I good? Like, is it good to just stay fighting? Like, if I'm still alive, can I just yeah, of course. fight them for as long as possible? Of yeah, of course. I mean, I wouldn't run immediately run. From their team. Just don't yeah. die, right? They play cover, play around health packs, keep distracting. If somebody's one of them is low, get the kill. I'm not saying you can't win a 1v2, right? You very yeah, easily I've get it. Yeah, I definitely have won 1v2s before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just and play, does that play still play apply way. if it's a 1v1, but it's like with their tank? Like, I feel like that's. Uh, does it change? Because tanks are a lot beefier, but tanks are also yeah. a lot slower a lot of the time, so they could be even less threats to you than like a Han. I feel like a lot of the time, at least in gold, Tanks just get so mad at me where, like, I shoot them once and they just turn or Matcher goes his punchy mode and he just chases me down. And I feel like at that point I'm getting value because their tank is out of the fight. Yeah, yeah. Chase me across yeah. the map. And you are. You are getting value. 100%. And like, like I said, usually they're not super equipped to kill you very much as Tracer. Yeah. It's hard. Just make sure not to die there. Yeah, that's the Sometimes key. I do. That's the key. Any other questions? Uh, I don't think so. All right. 